Go ahead, Lee. Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad that you're here. I know that there are so many places that you could be on this um, sultry Thursday afternoon, and I'm just so glad that you've chosen to spend your time here with me and listening to some music um, and thinking about how we can use music as listening activities for teaching, for teaching English. I am Liddy Rich. I teach intermediate ESL at Harmony Learning Center in Maplewood, Minnesota. The stuff that we're going to do today is, you know, what I'm going to share with you a handful of activities that I have used for almost 10 years now, focusing on um, listening using popular music. Um, but I do think it's adaptable for uh, more beginning students, and definitely it can go up and up and up and adaptable to all kinds of um, all kinds of students learning English or just learning language. Um, quickly, you will need a pencil or, or pe something to write with and some paper because I'm going to have you go through some of these activities. So grab that if you don't already have them nearby. You'll use them for um, three of our activities that we're going to do today. But to start, um, I'm going to invite you to, to chat out a couple of, to chat out the answer to this. What have you listened to today? Share your answer. Share your answer in the chat. Um, I, I want you to think about the variety. I want to see what kinds of things people have been listening to today, and if there's anything in addition to uh, workshops, summer institute speakers. Yep. Podcast, Korean drama, lots of voices, classical music. Great. Awesome. We'll come back to some of that in just a minute. So this is a workshop about listening and listening to popular music. And so, you know, my first questions are, you know, why listening? And then also why songs? And when I think about listening, you know, I've been teaching um, adults for about 10 or 12 years, and students come into the language class and they, they want to learn English. And we are told, well, that involves reading, writing, speaking, and listening. And on some level, we assume listening. We assume that students can, um, at least I do. I'm not, I won't speak for you. I had this the listening just has to be there for, for everything that we do. We ask them, we say hello when they walk in, we ask them to do this, we ask them to do that. And many of my students, after they've been with me for a while, they, they admit to me that when they started in my class, they only understood about half of what I said. And I actually think that probably they're exaggerating. But, you know, eventually over time, they admit that they also understand more and more. So listening is a really important skill. It's in the CCRS. However, if you look carefully in the CCRS, it's really all speaking and listening. And a lot of the listening things is about conversation. And while that's really important, if we look back at the things that you all said you listened to today, a lot of those things were not conversation. You were listening to other people talking to you, you were listening to the news, you're listening to your cat. That's not a conversation. And so we also need to practice this listening just as listening just for just the, the receiving of information um, through our ears. Um, so also I've got, you know, students ask for it. One of my students uh, earlier this year sent me an email and said, I want to thank you. I want to say thank you. And many times now I can listen by phone and make appointment with customers. My skill listen improved more when I met you. Now, this is a student who, um, who comes to my class somewhat intermittently. Um, through the pandemic. Um, she has a job where she has to engage with customers. And um, we also in my program test CASA's listening skills. Her listening skills have improved, have gone up 10 points over the last um, seven or eight months. So uh, the, the, it's not just because of the songs, but the listening, teaching the listening skills is really helpful and doing it through song um, has been a great way for me. Um, a few years ago, uh, Andrea Eckelberger and Aaron Carey did a fabulous workshop at um, Language and Literacy Institute about all kinds of how the brain works with listening and lots of great listening things. I highly recommend it. Um, it gave me lots of good information. And one of the things that they, they talked about, they acknowledged the different kinds of listening tests. 
Now, these listening texts are similar to reading texts. We have inauthentic texts um, created for the classroom. Think about spelling tests that we might give our students or dictation. They aren't real, they aren't real life. You know, nobody in your real life says, hey, spell this word or write down this sentence just as that. Maybe in a phone message, that's real. But in a classroom, it's, you know, it's important and it's a good listening practice, but it's not authentic. We often, we also have that simulated authentic text. You know, think about um, actors performing a dialogue. Not real, but close to reality. Um, and then there's the authentic text. So authentic texts are texts that are created to be used in real life. So that's uh, where the songs come in. Um, again, it's not the only way to do it, but it is, they are short texts, they are authentic texts. And um, if you've ever learned with Christine Kelly, you've heard her say that, you know, find one text and use it in all kinds of ways. So that's what I'm doing is using the song as one text and using it in all kinds of ways. Um, the approach that I'm taking is the bottom up approach. I think you'll see it in the way the activities build. What does that mean? Well, if we think about the top down approach, if we're looking at any kind of text, listening or a reading text, top down is you're looking at the big picture. What do you know about this? What is your experience coming into it? Um, and you approach the understanding in that way. The bottom up approach is starting more um, at the base level, starting at the word level, and uh, building up the knowledge a bit at a time. So um, I want to be explicit with that and hope you can see it um, as we go through these activities. I know I'm talking quickly. There's a lot I want to get to. We, I will answer questions at the end. If you want to put questions into the chat, uh, Patsy will interrupt if it's really important. Otherwise, I'll just answer them at the end, but you can put them into the chat as you're thinking about them. So what I've been doing is an activity that I've named um, the song of the week. And the way I do it in my classroom is it is one song all week. So we listen every day and do different activities with that, with that one song. On Monday, we do a keyword activity. Tuesday and Wednesday, usually um, it's sequencing activities. Um, sometimes it's the same kind of thing done a couple times. Sometimes there's a twist on it on one of the days. Thursday is where we get to the gap fill. And on Friday, depending on the song itself, uh, depending on if it's actually a five-day week, we do text questions or retell the text. Um, now, this has evolved over time. When I started doing this, you know, people said, listen to songs, fill in the blanks. And I did that with my students, and they just were baffled. There was so much to take in. And so I found that slowing down the process and giving them many opportunities to listen and re-listen and listen yet again gave them the ability to differentiate the words and to hear it. You know, think about if, if any of you have listened to the music of Hamilton, um, I bet that the first time you listened to any of those songs, it was not easy to catch all of the meaning. But if you listen and re-listen, you're going to understand it more and more and more. And with music, we do that. So it isn't, um, I think that that's an authentic experience as well. So again, in the classroom, I would use the same song over and over. But as I walk you through some of these activities, you're not going to get, I'm going to get, we're going to do it with three different songs, just so you can hear some of the different kinds of music. Um, and, you know, I have a long list that I'll share with you later of songs that you could try out and use. Um, and, you know, as I was putting the list together, so many were my favorites. It was really hard to choose. So um, we're going to go through some of them. The first activity um, that, that I do with the students um, is a keyword activity. Now, before I kind of landed on this activity, I would play the song for the students once or twice and ask them, just listen for words. What words jump out at you? And then I would write them up on the whiteboard. Um, and that was okay. Uh, but I found that this activity, this keywords activity, gave everybody a, a stronger way in. So in a physical classroom, what I do is I take all the lyrics and I go through the lyrics and I choose about um, 15, 
15 or 16 key words, words that are important to the song. I choose some that are that maybe get repeated many times that are easier to catch on to. Maybe some that are only there once, a little bit more challenging. Um, and I cut them up and I give each pair of students a set of all of the words. Um, the students in the will listen to the song twice. Always, I always give them two opportunities to go through them. And as they're listening, they separate separate out the words that they hear. And in these words, I've always included four extra words, four words that are not in the song. Otherwise, they're just listening and it's like, oh, I heard it, I didn't hear it. But this way, they're listening for what are the words that are there because there should always be four words that are not there and what are those words. I choose those extra words that thematically fit or could be there um, just so that it's not obvious when they look at the words what they are. So this is what it might look like uh, you know, with all of the, the pieces. Um, and as they're listening together, two students are moving them together. I like to have students working together whenever possible. It makes it a little bit more accessible. They can support each other, help each other out. In a remote classroom, um, I've adapted it to, to look like this, and this is what I'm gonna ask you to do. So um, on your piece of paper, what I'd like you to do is number your page one to 18. You don't need to have space to actually write down the words. So I'll show you the words in a moment, but um, what you're gonna do is this. We're gonna listen to the song. In my remote classroom, we play it twice, but you know, for a summer institute, you get just one shot. Listen to the song and mark the number of the word you hear. So put a check mark, an X, whatever you want next to the numbers. And remember, there are four extra words here. Um, so these are the words um, I would echo, read them with the students, broom, burger, came, career, chairs, job, knees, money, pay, people, restaurant, September, stayed, things, vacation, waited, worked, and year. Now these words, I put them into alphabetical order. So again, if you hear the word broom, put a check mark next to the word broom. If you hear the word vacation, put a check mark next to number 15. And in the end, I'll ask you which are the words that are not there. So I'm gonna play the song again, it's called Mr. Selak. Um, I always ask my students um, at the beginning of the week to think about why did I choose this song for this week? They've come to expect that as a question. I will share with you why um, I, ways that I, reasons that I've chosen this song um, in the past. And, uh, but here we go, Mr. Selak. Two, one, two, Sorry. 
me a broom and I'll sweep my way to heaven. Give me a job, you name it. Let the other 40 million, 307 people who want to get famous. Now, the only thing I want, the only thing, thing that she wants. you were in my class, we would listen to this one more time. And then I would ask you, which are the words that you didn't hear? You know, what are, what are the words? I would mark them off on the paper or on the board. Um, I would take all of the answers. Usually there's a lot more that are, that are missing. Um, do you have just four or do you have more words that you didn't hear? Um, just one time through, it's, it's challenging. After we go over them, um, then I will show them the, the words, listen to the song following along. In a physical classroom, I stand at the whiteboard and I circle the words as I hear them. It's often comical as I'm racing to finish them, but you know, students will holler out words that I missed. Um, in the not physical classroom, um, I've, I highlight all of the words and then I go back and check. So um, just so you see, so it looks something like this when I share it. Um, so here are the words. So we heard job and money and restaurant um, and I go through it. Um, and we, we listen to, to all of it. In case you are wondering, the extra words for those of you playing at home were career, chairs, pay, and September. How did you do? The next activity, so if you know, again, that would have been three times of hearing the song. So they heard it twice doing the activity and one more time following along with the lyrics. So the next day, you know, if students were there, then they heard it, it's in the back of their mind. The, this song, you're gonna get it cold for doing this activity, which sometimes happens if you miss the first day of class, that also sometimes happens. Um, but we're going to do um, a sequencing activity. In a physical classroom, I cut up the song into sentence strips. Um, I, you know, you may have noticed in the lyrics to the, um, Mr. Selak, that um, the that I, I've numbered all of the lines. Of course, take the numbers off when you're cutting them into strips. I don't want to make it that easy. Um, cut the song into strips. I give uh, groups of three or four students all a complete sense set of the sentence strips, um, and then again they listen to the song twice. And while they're listening, they're moving the strips um, around on the table putting the song in order. Um, it's a group project. It has something that they can hold on to, something they're focusing on. So they're using you know, their, their eyes, their ears, their hands, which engaging all of those parts of the brain help keep them focused and help focus also on, on what they're listening to. In a remote class, so that's, this is what it look, might look like, uh, moving the words together like that. I've also done it where I cut the words into bigger pieces of paper and I have students stand up when they hear their part of the song the first time and then the second time I have them stand up and move and move themselves physically in the space. Um, I do that, you know, not for every song, but every so often. It's another way of getting them physically involved. So in a remote classroom, the sequencing activity, of course, looks a little bit different. And what, I, what I've done is this, um, and, and this is what I'd like you to do, number your page one through six. For this one, you're not, you don't need a lot of space. 
next to the numbers, you are just going to write the words um, yes or no. Typically, we would listen to the song twice. Um, and I'm going to show you some of the lyrics. I'm going to show you, you know, I think uh, a stanza at a time. I think it's about four lines each. And you're going to follow along. And are these lines in the correct sequence? This version, all of the words are the same, though all of the words are correct, but the lines may have been jumbled. So you're going to listen and you're going to write either yes or no. So I'm going to jump over and get the audio here. And here we go. to the windowsill To see a bit of heaven shoot across the sky The one and only time Daddy saw it fly It came from the east just as bright as a torch The neighbors had a party on their porch Daddy rocked the baby mother said amen When Halle came to visit in 1910 She slept so sound In 1986 that wish came round It came from the east just as bright as a torch She saw it in the sky from her daddy's porch The seven sent as it was back then When Hallie came to Jackson in 1910 Chapin Carpenter singing uh, When Hallie Came to Jackson. After um, we do the sequencing activity, before we actually go over it, um, this is when I would uh, echo read the whole text with the class. Uh, I read a line, they read a line. At the end of a stanza, this is where I take questions. This is where um, I get a lot of the, you know, word by, you know, what does this word mean? What is this idea? Um, that kind of thing. Um, it also gets the language into the student's mouth. So again, one text, lots of different activities that we can do with it. Um, I answer their questions. And then I listen to the song one more time, showing them the, the, the lyrics as we go. And I always invite students to, to use their eyes and their ears. And if they want to also sing along, to use their mouths. Some students love that, some students don't, but uh, 
that's that all works just fine. Um, but it is one more way of getting it more um, more solid into their brain. Um, this book also was illustrated, and the the video or the the YouTube link um, has the pictures from the song, which are really wonderful. Um, at that point, I would you know with the um, in, in, a, in a physical classroom, I don't really care how they do on the sequencing on their table. It really is the mechanism for them to focus. And um, some of them do great. Some of them, you know, the first time is really hard, but the second time through, they do a lot better. Um, in the remote classroom, I will read through all of those. And I will let you know that um, on these numbers, uh, one, three, four, and five were all no, and number two and number six were correct. Um, one of my students in, um, since I've been teaching remotely, at one point said, you know, teacher Liddy, it's getting a little too easy. We don't wanna do, you know, on the second day, on, on Tuesday, I would usually do this. On the second day, I would switch them around. It wouldn't be the same mistakes. Um, but she asked, uh, she asked me to do, to play around with the words. So what I've started doing, uh, because they wanted a little bit more challenge. On the first day, I still do this exactly as I just did it with you. Um, and on the second day, I do change some of the words and I, I, change, I often change things so that they rhyme. I put all those things back into the correct order. I change them so they rhyme. Um, it just is one more level to make it a little bit more challenging. Um, I told you earlier, you know, I forgot to ask you why I might have chosen these songs. This song um, I chose originally, I was doing, uh, I, uh, we had a book about lots of famous people and it was Mark Twain. And it turns out that Mark Twain was born in a year that um, Halley's Comet was in the sky. And then he died 74 years later on another, in another year that when Halley was, Halley's Comet was in the sky. So that was kind of cool, but it's such a wonderful song and it's got such a great story that um, I've kept it and I've used it for a lot of other things as well. Uh, the first song, Mr. Selak, um, I've used in a unit about, um, usually it's about labor, labor history, labor day, all of those kinds of things. It's a song about working. So we've done two and we actually have a, we're doing okay on time. So I'll, I'll take any, you know, how are these two listening tasks similar? How are they different? What do you notice about them? So I'll take a moment, write any answers you've got in the chat um, about that. We'll take a couple. Or if, Patsy, if there are any other questions that seem like they, I should answer them now, I'm open to that as well. Yeah, I'm not seeing any questions, just a lot of praise. People are digging this for sure and enjoying awesome. the music. Um, there was a question about the level that you teach, oh, yeah. Liddy. Thank you. Yep. Great, thanks. I teach, a, my class is an intermediate level. Uh, students in my class score uh, in the CASAS reading and listening to be in my class between 201 and 218. Um, however, um, I, it absolutely could be leveled up. And there are parts of this, I think, that could be leveled down a bit, maybe not beginning, 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 but, um, you know, the higher beginning, I think, could do, could do some of these. Um, I'll share in a little bit, I've got a long list of songs that I have used um, over the years, and you will see in there um, that there are many that I've done on short weeks, things that are a little simpler, things that maybe don't have as much uh, extra things, things like uh, What a Wonderful World, wonderful song, but also a simpler listening song. I would start, look through the list, look for the ones that say short week or easier. I tried to label them all somewhat similarly, um, but I think that you could go a little lower. Um, I don't know, let me know what you think. Also, I have the luxury of having long classes five days a week. Um, this absolutely could be adapted to do, you know, to do it in three days if you wanted or to do it over time. But I really encourage you not to just throw a song at students and ask them to fill in the gaps without warming up their brain and getting them ready for listening. Because I think that that's just uh, asking them to do something that's really, really hard. Um, I don't know, how has it been? How is it on this activity? And I'll ask you the next activity, you're going to do that. You're going to get a cold, a cold listen, although you might know the song um, and ask you to fill in the blanks. But how has it been? How was it doing the sequencing on something that you hadn't heard before? So a question as to whether you think this would be better as an ending activity and not a warm up then if you 
think you need to you know, give students some, some time with it first, or what do you think? Um, I'm not sure I understand ending in what way. I mean, this um, is like at the end of a lesson versus the beginning, I believe. I usually do it after our break. That's where it falls in, in, in our day. And I usually do something after this. It's not the, it's not the beginning of the day, but I'm talking more about warming up the listening, listening to the song one day, listening to the song the next day, listening to it a third time and hearing it many times before being asked to fill in the blank. And there's a comment that people probably are better at coming back from break if they know a song's coming. Um, and also a question around Muslim students who perhaps are opposed to the music yeah, piece. Sure, that's a great question. Um, you know, when I first started teaching this, I was a little nervous about it. And um, I talked to my students and, um, I, and I said a couple of things. First, um, this is American culture. And so songs in American culture are really common work in English class in an American school. This is an okay thing. I believe to be offering um, and my door is open. And so it's after break. So I, I do have a student who, I, it took me a while to, to figure out, oh, prayer time is always during our song. And that's absolutely fine. Students can come and go as they please. Um, and I have had students over time, like when a new, new Muslim student would come in, somebody else would say to them, this is school. We're doing a school activity. It's okay, you can do this in this way. So, you know, I think for the Muslim students, I invite them to join in. And I also invite them to do whatever they need to do to, to do what is right for them. Um, this year, uh, I had a student who told me that it was during Ramadan that she couldn't listen to music. And she, you know, so at break time, she would say, are we doing anything other than the song? And we, you know, I, I adapted. And so on the days, if, if she was actually present on those days, I would say, you know, we'll switch up the order. I'll do the other activity. You know, we'll do the pronunciation practice first, then we'll end with the song so you can leave early. So I negotiated that with students, but they seem to take care of themselves. And I feel like, you know, this is an American classroom. This is American culture. This is what I'm exposing them to. Um, and, um, so that, that they have to find a way to either be comfortable or take care of themselves. And it's a great question. Um, at the beginning, I was really nervous about it, but once I got going, it hasn't been an issue. And, um, and, I, and people have talked to me about it and, and they've told, you know, for people that it's an issue, then they, I invite them to do whatever they need to do to take care of themselves. All right, we're gonna do one more song. Um, and the next activity is a gap fill. Um, our last song is It's Not Easy Being Green. You might remember this from somewhere in your life. Um, in a physical classroom, I give a, the students a copy of the lyrics with gaps. Each line is always numbered. Um, that's a way also to, you know, that helps students always talk, be able to talk about in line four, what is that word? Um, or um, in that, in that, how do you find evidence in a text? We, we use the numbers for all kinds of things. Again, students listen to the song twice for this activity um, and they write things in the gaps. In a remote classroom, it's pretty much the same thing, but you don't actually get to have all the, the song lyrics. So for this activity, there are 17 lines in this song. I'd like you to number your page one to 17. And this time you need to have space to write the words. So have space on your page. I will show you the lyrics. Um, you're gonna listen to the song only once, sorry, um, and write, please write the missing words. So um, you should be able to see the lyrics now. And here we go. It's not easy being green Having to spend each day the color of the leaves When I think it might be nicer being red or yellow or gold or something much more colorful like that It's not easy being green seems you blend in with so many other ordinary things and people tend to pass you over 
because you're not standing out like flashy sparkles in the water or stars in the sky. But green's the color of spring and green can be cool and friendly like and green can be big like a mountain or important like a river or tall like a tree when green is all there is to be it could make you wonder why but why wonder why wonder i'm green it'll do fine it's beautiful and i think it's what i want to be So you may have noticed that um, I broke one of my cardinal rules here, which um, is to make sure that the lyrics I have match the actual version that I'm using. This song has lots of different, believe it or not, this song has a few different versions out on YouTube. Um, and some of the times um, Kermit talks about being as big as a mountain and sometimes as big as a river. So I apologize um, for having some of the words wrong, but you know that is what happens as we do this. Um, so. Uh, I hope that you were able to go with go with that there. Um, after after listening to this twice, um, you know, I encourage students to go back and check their answers or just follow along. Um, I put it up on the whiteboard, or you know, I read through and say it's not that easy being. And anybody, you know, holler out an answer. It's not that easy being green, right? Having to. and each day, the color of the leaves, and so on throughout the song. Um, and then one more time, we listen to it with all of the words um, and just have another chance to, to get our eyes going as fast as he's singing, or in this case, as slow as he's singing, and um, to hear all of it. Um, couple of things. So, you know, oftentimes by the second, third, fourth day in the week, you know, depending on the song, students ask me, you know, what is going on in the song? What's this all about? Or um, with this song, actually, I was using it, um, we were reading a story about the frog prince, so I brought in a song about a frog. And the first time we did it, I was asking them, well, what is Kermit talking about? What do you mean it's not that easy being green? And, you know, this is from Sesame Street, right? This is a song many of us have grown up with. And I feel like, you know, it's so clear what's going on, but actually it's really complex text. It isn't so simple to figure these pieces out. Um, and so um, I started building in um, with these sets of text dependent questions with the songs that, that are complex enough and rich enough. So um, I share with you some of the questions that I've got. Um, oh, after listening, Teacher reads the lyrics, pausing to fill in the gaps. Students call out what they've heard, answer questions again, um, and listen one more time. So some of the questions you know, that I asked here were, you know, line one says, it's not that easy being green. What would Kermit like to be instead of green? Line five repeats, it's not that easy being green. Why does Kermit think this is a problem? Line 10 says, but green's the color of spring. For Kermit, is this a good thing or a bad thing? And how do you know? And finally, in the end, Kermit's happy about being green. How do you know this? Um, these are not easy questions. Um, I have students working and partners talking about it. Um, but again, you know, if you've worked with text-dependent questions and other um, and other kinds of with other kinds of text, it helps the students go back in and dig in and understand chunk by chunk some of the bigger ideas. Um, and they've been able to get a whole lot further um, in understanding some of these big ideas. 
I don't have text questions for all of the songs. Some of them don't merit that, but, um, but when they do, they're really, really helpful and a great way to go back in. Um, another activity I do at the end of the week um, is, is a retell. So I go back to those um, original keywords, review all of them, listen to the song one more time, and then invite the students, um, usually with a, with a partner, um, that to use two or three of the keywords to retell the song, any part of it in their own words. For some students, that means they are not looking at the words, but they just, they're just looking at the keywords. For some, that means they just repeat a line that they remember, and that's awesome. For others, they can use their own words and tell something new about the song. Um, and so I, I hope you see that I built in a bunch of ways that students at different levels can access um, these activities and find a way that challenges themselves at a level that's sort of a just right level for themselves. So that's a quick run through of, of what I do. I have a list for you that Andrea or Patsy, somebody is going to chat out to you. Um, the songs that I, I, the way I choose my songs, these are my rules. Um, they are free and available on YouTube. These songs, I, my goal is that they're less than four minutes. They don't always, some of them are a little longer, but my goal is that they are four minutes, less than four minutes long. And, you know, if you're going to play them three or four times in a class, that, that adds up really quickly. Um, they are in English. They're in English that is understandable. The person speaking, you can, you can understand most of the words. Um, there are no expletives. I, I don't want to, I don't want to deal with that. Um, and also that, that whatever the content is, I'm willing to explain it. That might be different for you and me. So whatever you're comfortable with, um, some things may be okay for you and not me or vice versa. So make sure you listen and read the lyrics. Um, and finally, you know, I feel like there needs to be, a, I have a sniff test. Um, I need to be able to actually live with listening to this song 20 times in a week. And there are some songs that might be perfect, but I just can't do it. It just isn't a song that I could manage 20 times in a week. You know, by the end of the week, um, it's a lot of songs. But um, sometimes I, you know, I do it anyway. So you have to make your own rules, but these are things that, that the way I choose my songs. Um, there is, um, it is available, but what, what questions in the last couple of minutes, what questions do you have? And actually I'm gonna, I'd love to see you. If, well, I guess I can't see you. Anyway, what questions do you have? There was a question earlier, and you already kind of addressed it, Liddy, talking about how much time you spend explaining vocabulary. Yeah, um, it, it varies. I, it's a great question. I don't usually use the song as my vocabulary instruction. I use the song as whatever vocabulary comes up. Um, I rarely will teach them a word that isn't a word that they have a question about. I sometimes know that they understand very little when they ask no questions. Um, but if there's a word that's really important, I will point that out. Usually though, um, the culture in my class is that they ask the questions that they need. Um, but then, you know, so the, the vocabulary comes in naturally. Um, I would say it's about 10, five or 10 minutes as we read through and echo read, whatever comes up, we I answer those questions. Um, and um, yeah, so the, the, I don't usually teach this as the vocabulary, but I use it as the natural vocabulary that comes up. Do I have some favorite songs for low level students? Yes, um, I would say, um, I would need to look through the list really quickly. Let me, um, definitely What a Wonderful World is one of them. Um, there are a lot of songs by They Might Be Giants. I don't know if you're familiar with them. They, they have a lot of songs that are about um, science-y things. Um, and so some of those songs, um, I would have to look through and see. Um, I will, I will come back to the question about favorite songs for low level, but I, I would say look through the list and look for the ones that are for, on the short weeks, and those are going to be the ones that are, I think are a bit more accessible. 
um, can you vary the piece of the song? So that, you know, what I tell them with this, with the song and the listening is, you know, when I'm talking and I know I've been talking fast, um, I, you know, they can tell me, hey, teacher, lady, slow down. And I can do that. But when they're listening to a song or the radio or the TV or any of those things, they can't. So that's part of the reason I give them the opportunities to listen many times through. Um, so I have not found a way that you can vary that. There might be, you know, technology is amazing these days. I haven't found that. Um, on the, so on the song list, there is, there are lots of different columns for different things that I've connected it to, but in the area where there's notes, it usually, there's places that you could, I think you can search through this document. I tried to make it searchable so you could find, um, find them, but you know, it's a Google document. So I can try and go and highlight some of those as well. So if you come back to it in another couple of days, I could try and do that as well. All right, well, it looks like we are at time and you have got, I mean, you have a ton of questions. I think maybe one last question. Do you have a favorite song, Liddy? Or is there oh my goodness. a favorite song of your, that your learners have loved? Um, that's such a hard question. Um, so they, they really like Mr. Selak, actually. Um, that was one, one that I love teaching is um, Suzanne Vega's, um, what is it called? It's all in the present progressive. Tom's Diner. Tom's Diner is a great song. Um, so those are two. And these three are among my favorites. Oh, and also the other favorite is Harley. Um, it's a great ballad. Um, great, great story. You know, you'll see, you know, these are a lot of singer songwriter, folky songs, a lot of country songs. Um, so those are the ones. Thank you all so, so much. I'm so glad you spent the afternoon with me. If you've got questions, um, my email is uh, on the, should be on the song list, but more questions, contact me and I'm happy to answer questions or do anything else I can. Thank you, Liddy. Why don't you go ahead and stop sharing and we'll let people turn their cameras on since this is the last session of the conference. Should we have like a moment? Let's have a moment. Yay. <laughs> since we didn't get to hang out in the, you know, the, the great space of St. Cloud. This is <laughs> it's so nice to see everybody. Oh, it's nice to see faces. We got a baby some. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Who knew? All right. I'm going to go to the next page because there's like three pages of happy faces to see. Aw. Well, lovely. Thank you so much, Liddy. I hope you have a chance to read through the chat because people like couldn't get enough. This was great. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> and I saw somebody got to hear the roaches in live and in person. So that's awesome. I'm I'm envious. That's great. And apparently Mary um, Chapin Carpenter is coming to town and the fall. Oh. I, I, I put ticket information in the chat. <laughs> that's great. Um, another favorite another favorite song that my students really like is from Fiddler on the Roof, Do You Love Me? Uh, yeah. A couple of years ago um, at our school, we've had visits from um, 10,000 Things Theater Company, and they were doing that. And that song just elicited so much fabulous conversation. So I do that with some regularity. Nice. Um, great song. And also yeah. really, you know, lots, lots and lots to unpack. Did anyone else have that da, 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 go through your head when you mentioned the Susan Vegas? <laughs> So you're welcome. You'll all be singing that now. Yeah. yeah. And um, Liddy has not uploaded the list of songs to Sketch yet, but it working will it. be up there. She's working on it right now. So you should be able to see that shortly on the app. Yeah, we'll get that up for you. I'm going to save it someplace here too. So if people can't okay. find it, let me know. We can, we can get it to you. Oh, Thanks. good. Well, I hope you had a wonderful summer institute, virtual as it was. Nice to see you all. And here's hoping our paths cross in person at an Atlas event soon. <laughs> Sometime soon. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Atlas. Thank you, uh, Literacy Minnesota and everybody else who helped to make all of this happen. Patsy and Andrea, thank you for doing And I'm going to, since stuff. you're all here and you're special, I'm just going to shoot you this link. This is the link. This is a super secret link to the playlist of all the recordings for all the sessions, um, awesome. except the ones that are currently still being recorded. But um, yeah, you should stop the recording. I'm going to get in trouble for oh, sure. Yeah, yeah, I think you did. <laughs> but it'll be available, of course, to all attendees. But uh, most of them are there. I've been 